Hello everybody, so I'm back here to RUHS, the same question paper, remember I solved earlier. Now this time it is question paper of human anatomy of students, of MBBS students admitted in 2019. But this one is now of a supplementary examination. So let me tell you a brief description about this RUHS. That is Rajasthan University of Health Sciences is a big university. It encompasses all most of the medical colleges in Rajasthan. Some of them are government medical colleges and some are under society medical colleges. So their government medical colleges included Sabai Mansing Medical College that is in Jaipur, SMS Medical College and then you have Sardar Patel Medical College, Bikaner, Rabindna Tagore Medical College, Sampu Nanand Medical College, Jawaharlal Nehru Medical College, Ajmer Government Medical College, Kota, RUHS College of Medical Sciences, Jaipur. Then the society medical colleges, there are Barmir Medical College, Bharatpur Medical College, Dungarpur Medical College, Jhalabar Medical College, Jhalabar, Rajmata Vijay Raja Sindhya Medical College, Bhilwara, Pandit Deen Dayalupadhyay Medical College, Churu, Government Medical College, Pali and Seeker Medical College. So, in this question paper, there were two sections, section A and then you have is section B. Section B is subjective and the section A is mostly objective. So there are six fill in the blank questions as question number one. The remnants of notochord are dash and dash. Remember this notochord along to which this vertebral column that develops. So those intervertebral discs onto which this vertebrae are held together, the body of, in between the body of vertebrae. So one is intervertebral discs. Then you know that the body of atlas that is C1 is attached to C2, that is axis. So, and that's called dense or dendroid process. So from the apex of the dense, there is a ligament that's called apical ligament of dense that passes through the foramen magnum and is attached within the skull anteriorly to the foramen magnum. The another thing is apical ligament of dense. The direction of fibers in interosseous membrane in upper limb is dash and dash. So remember this this interosseous membrane which is also forming this intermediate radio ulnar joint. The direction of collagen fibers have a role in weight bearing and sharing. So the direction of these collagen fibers is directed downwards, downwards and medially from radius to ulna the skin at the angle of mandible is supplied by dash nerve this greater auricular nerve it's a cutaneous nerve branch from the cervical plexus abducent nerve supplies dash muscle which is responsible for turning the eyes dash so abducent is you know lr6 it supplies lateral rectus muscle which is responsible for turning the eyes laterally the smallest long bone is dash. Now this is a bit controversial question because smallest long bone is not being clearly mentioned precisely because long bone are two types. Here I have drawn is two long bones. This we call as long bone and this is a miniature long bone. Long bones are 7 into 2 is equal to 14 in number. That includes humerus, radius ulna, femur, tibia, fibula and clavicle. Now miniature long bones include 10 metacarpals, 10 metatarsals, 14 phalanges of hand and 14 phalanges of the toes. 10 plus 10 that is metacarpals plus metatarsals plus 14 plus 14 into 2 is equal to 20 plus 28 into 2 76 miniature long bones so there's a difference between long bone and miniature long bones the most important difference is uh, you know there is a primary center of ossification that develops in the diaphysis of the long bones is same for both long bones and miniature long bones this is primary center of ossification then in long bones, there is a secondary center of ossification that develops generally after birth at both its ends. But in miniature long bones, you have only one ossif secondary ossification center, which develops at either upper end or lower end. 
So the most important difference between long bones and miniature long bones is that in a miniature long bone there is only one secondary ossification center either at the upper end or at the lower end but the terminology stays the same that in a miniature and in a long bone there are three parts in an adult skeleton with three parts a shaft and an upper end and a lower end upper end we generally call as the head lower end we call as the base and this terminology for an adult bone is same for miniature bones and long bones in a growing bone this shaft is called diaphysis and upper and lower ends are called epiphysis so because they have not mentioned uh, whether they're talking about the long bone or a miniature long bone so answer can be two clavicle can also be co considered correct here or phalanges both should be marked correct because they have not specified what type of long bone perichondrium is absent in articular cartilage that is present at the end of the bones the surface of the bone which is participating in the joint formation mostly the synovial joints now there are four mcqs question number one is pseudoganglion is associated with axillary nerve ulnar nerve median nerve none of the above so among this the answer is axillary nerve so let me tell you that pseudoganglion to my knowledge pseudoganglion is found in three nerves one is this nerve to teres minor which is a branch of axillary nerve then there is posterior interosseous nerve posterior interosseous nerve of forearm so this nerve passes through the fourth compartment in the below the extensor retinaculum and there it has a pseudoganglion occasionally and forms a bullous swelling and which can be a cause of pain then there is lateral terminal division of the deep peroneal nerve now this nerve runs under the surface of this extensor digitorum brevis extensor hallucis brevis muscle and under to that it has this pseudoganglion next question is level of cricoid cartilage corresponds to c4 vertebra c5 vertebra c6 vertebrae or c7 vertebrae so remember that cricoid cartilage corresponds to c6 cervical vertebrae and upper part of the thyroid cartilage corresponds to c4 cervical vertebrae so answer will be c6 vertebrae question c all the muscles of mastication close the mouth except temporalis masseter little pterygoid middle pterygoid everybody knows this this has been made to learn in each of the classes so it's lateral pterygoid among the muscles of mastication will help in opening the mouth other accessory muscles include are geniohyoid antibile of diagastric they are also assisting in depressing the mandible transitional epithelium is found in uterus vagina urinary bladder gall bladder so you know the transitional epithelium is also called as urothelium and it is present in renal pelvis ureter urinary bladder and the prostatic urethra in males question number 3 was a porter came to a doctor for difficulty in raising his right arm vertically upwards doctor asked him to press his hands against the wall doctor found that medial border and inferior angle of his right scapula had become prominent which muscle is tested in this case this is serratus anterior which is the what is nerve supply for this muscle would do number c6 7 and 8 from the anterior primary rami what is the deformity called winging of scapula question number four right short notes on any five carpal tunnel syndrome rotator cuff rima glottidis broca's area auditory tube medial medullary syndrome this is also called as digerin syndrome our lateral medullary syndrome is also called as wallenberg syndrome because it's related to medial portion of the medulla you know medial functional column is the motor som somatic out you know, outgoing nerve so that includes the 12th cranial nerve hypoglossal so in such a condition the tongue will be deviated to the paralyzed side in fact affected side because the normal side the genioglossus push pushes the muscle to the paralyzed side that's a check for this medullary syndrome and rima glottidis you know it's the narrowest portion of the cavity of this larynx with this vocal folds actually change keep changing the opening of this rima glottidis during phonation and breathing explain briefly medial lemniscus medial lemniscus abduction at shoulder joint carotid sheath dangerous area of the face section b 
was a long question of 20 marks that includes a describe thyroid gland under these headings capsule relation blood supply development and applied aspect question 7 is explain why any you have to explain any 5 why maxillary sinus is prone to infection simple reason maxillary sinus is a such sinus where the ostia is not at the level of the floor it's at the higher level and it opens into the middle uh, meters of the nose so there is very much chances that the fluids get collected here in the sinus so maxillary sinus gets easily congested and it is not easy to drain it and it's opening the ostia is at the middle meters of the nose at this ethmoidid bulla ethmoides so there are easy chances of infection and it cannot be easily drained because the ostia is at a higher level than its floor why formation of calculi are more common in some mandibular gland as compared to the parotid gland simple reason he some mandibular duct opens in the floor of the mouth below to this under surface of the tongue at the lingual papillae so you know the gravity has a role because it, it, this is opening in the oral cavity so all the time food material and whatever we take in that can easily be taken up in this uh, submandibular duct while this uh, parotid duct it does not into opens into the oral cavity proper parotid duct opens into the buccogingival vestibule right in the under surface of the inner surface of the cheeks opposite the upper second molars so less of gravity has a role there and less of food collection there next question why there is risk drop in injury of radial nerve simply uh, you know if there is supracondylar injury of radial nerve because you know the little epicondyl of humerus this common extensor origin from the anterior surface of the little epicondyl of humerus so all the extensors most of the extensors of the wrist they are being innervated by radial nerve there so if there is supracondylar injury there will be a wrist drop why are tips of nose and fingers red in extreme winters simple reason because there is chances of uh, you know redistribution of blood in such uh, exposed parts and during these chilly weathers chill and chill these are called chill blains so there's uh, congested uh, you know uh, the blood becomes sluggish and is less of venous return from these areas of the body you know tip of the nose ear lobule tip of the fingers so because of the sluggish flow there is less of wet venous return from these sites why do injuries of scalp bleed profusely you know the on the scalp the third layer here it is being formed by this digastric muscle and that is called occipito frontalis which has an interbelly tendon and this is called galea aponeurotica so wounds that get cut transversely like this so because of the pull of these fibers there is gaping in the wound and that's why it does not heal easily and there is more of bleeding further you know there are five layers of the scalp and the blood vessels the emissary veins they perforate these all the layers and they terminate or anastomose with the veins of the scalp below to the skin and as i told you this galea aponeurotica this the mid uh, third layer this is a fibrous layer thick fibrous layer so when a vessel perforates a fibrous layer so because of the fibrous attachments whenever there is an injury this perforation of a vessel through a fibrous tissue is not easily constricted this fibrous tissue prevents the constriction of blood vessels and therefore that also is a reason for profuse bleeding on the skull why there is partial ptosis on horner syndrome you know this muscle lps levator palpebri superioris it has two components skeletal muscle and a smooth muscle smooth muscle is also called as muller's muscle skeletal muscle is innervated by third cranial nerve oculomotor nerve smooth muscles are innervated by sympathetic fibers so that's why even in oculomotor nerve injury there is partial ptosis and even in horner syndrome where is there is loss of sympathetic innervation then also there is partial ptosis so horner syndrome is due to loss of sympathetic innervation to the structures in the orbits lastly you have write short notes on any four you have microanatomy of the thymus you have to draw this histology turner syndrome that is 
monosomy of the sex chromosome xo and then you have development of the tongue internal jugular vein deep palmar arch so that's done <laughs>